My name is Joan from Sale, and I'm the owner of Restomont, previously known as SA Hot Rod Magazine and uh, the Rod Shop TV show. Yeah, this is kind of weird. I'm normally the guy behind the camera <laughs> doing the interview. Where did it all start? Well, so lockdown has caused havoc um, on everything. Now, within a few weeks, we, we lost distribution and stuff for the magazine, and getting it back up and running was just such a mess and so expensive. Within three editions, we like, no, this, this is not going to work. The market was just not ready. We had to try and figure out what we want to do and how we wanted to do it. We started the podcast, which is something we'll, we'll still cover. In growing a new product and going in a different direction, this gave us this opportunity to change and to expand and to build something bigger. I mean, being in this industry for like 15, almost 15 years or 16 years and seeing it grow and seeing where everything comes from, obviously you can, you can see pitfalls and you can see what's going on and how the market's reacting to things. But in order to do what we wanted to do, we had to expand the brand. Um, we couldn't just be hot rods anymore. We couldn't just be, you know, rod shop type of stuff. We couldn't just be rods and muscle cars. We have to be more. And that's when we thought of Restomod, which is restoration modification. And that allowed us to go, okay, it's not just restoration and modification of classic cars and muscle cars and hot rods and stuff. It's of everything. Now it gave us a chance to start looking into the entire, yeah, I don't even want to call it automotive, but everything with the engine, you know, from boats and bikes. Now we have the opportunity and now we have a brand that can bring everything together. That's where the big change came from. So with lockdown, within the first few weeks, I, I was losing my mind. I, you know, just sitting, sitting at home, not knowing what's going on and what's gonna happen. I had to start doing something. And I was doing like Zoom meetings and Zoom calls with friends all over the world. Um, you know, car, a lot of car guys you know, from the UK and the US and South African guys and stuff. I was talking to my friend Brett, who heads up Rockford, and I was telling him about a conversation I was having with some guys in the US, and he went, yeah, that's very interesting. You know these guys that I'm talking to, and why don't I create a podcast? Because, you know, I've, I've, I've built up a very nice list of, of friends and acquaintances over the years, and, you know, having access to them, I could start getting behind this, you know, behind the scenes stories of how things are done. Because I, one thing that I love, and I've always loved it from SA Hot Rods to, you know, from the, from the magazine right through to the TV show, is I love telling the story. I love telling the stories of, how things got to where they were and how cars were built and the history behind it. I love stories. And this gave me the idea and, and this gave me the opportunity to do it. So I launched the show as Joe's Rod Shop Podcast. You know, at that stage we were just thinking still with rods and stuff. And the show's name will be changing to fall in more with everything that we're doing. But it gave us such great feedback because all of a sudden I could speak to my friends like Chris Douglas from Edelbrock and you know Dan Khan from Khan Media and local guys like Jason Webb from The Drifting and all of a sudden I had all these guys on the show um, and we could just talk cars, talk about what they're doing, where they're going. The show evolved, you know, as, as you start doing these things, because initially I based the show on something like, um, close to like Joe Rogan, but Joe Rogan's episodes are like, two, three hours long. And I was doing long conversations and stuff and people were complaining because, you know, so we had to adapt the show then to the market. So instead of having like hour long conversations and stuff, we had to start cutting them down to like 20 minutes because it's also, there's a massive difference in podcasting between your viewership internationally and your viewership locally. Podcasting is still a new thing for South Africa. Guys don't really understand it but it's something that's great. But to me, it is such a great forum because a lot of times the show highlights what's going on in the industry. Now, now you've got you know, Annie and Joel and then from Speed and Sound and 
you know all these guys are talking about what's actually going on and it gives you a better perspective of the market um, and what's actually going on out there because I feel sometimes social media gives us you know this blurred vision of what's actually happening and what you know struggles and stuff is out there for the market but that also got me into conversations where I started thinking more about what is going on in South Africa how do we expand and you know you you, you sit and you talk to people and it's like why are why do we struggle so much in South Africa to get sponsorship into motor racing and all this type of stuff? Why is motorsport and stuff not on TV? You know, there's, there's all these questions that kept popping up into my head. Every time I did the podcast, that led us to the next step of where we wanted to go.